Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2019 Honda Accord in the LX trim level. This Accord is sitting on 225, 50 Hankook tires wrapped around 17 inch alloy wheels with a metallic silver finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Obsidian Blue Pearl. And the sun is shining at right now, but the vehicle's not very clean. So hopefully you get an idea of what the color looks like. I think it looks fantastic. And I think it would look even better when the vehicle's nice and shiny clean. Okay, so looking here in the front, a lot of gloss black here in the center portion. It extends out uh, underneath the headlights here and extends down. And then you have a, an adaptive cruise control sensor, part of the Honda sensing. And you see that empty space there, that's why. So it has that. And this portion here, it's kind of hard to tell right off the bat with the blue. Uh, white is really easy to see. You can see this flat black portion here and it extends down little accent I think it looks pretty nice uh, once you kind of once you can see it um, especially on the lighter colors it looks pretty sharp now the headlights they're powered by a combination of LED and standard bulbs LED for your low beams you can see it's a series of reflector LEDs for your low beams and then the standard bulb is for your high beams the upper portion is an LED turn signal the lower portion in the side is an LED daytime running light and the whole front of the vehicle is capped off with this chrome piece here going from one side to the other, kind of accenting the width of the vehicle. So looking at the profile, the wheels look really nice. They blend in well, they don't stand out too much. And the handles and side mirrors, the upper portion of the side mirrors are all body colored. The pillars are blacked out with a gloss black right in here. So that way, if you were tinted glass, it would kind of solidify the glass portion. Uh, the under portion of the glass is black, but the upper portion has chrome at the very top. You have little mud flaps right in here and here on the back of the wheels. This is what the key looks like. And this is a key fob here with a physical key on the inside in case you need it. Then you have your lock and unlock buttons any ability to open up the trunk and a panic button here. So. This doesn't have, so even though this is a proximity key, it does have push button start, but you still, still need to use the buttons to unlock and unlock the doors. It does not have that functionality on the handles. But let's go ahead and open up the trunk so we can see how far it goes up. So you can see it goes up about halfway. You will need to use your hand to raise it up. And let's go ahead and push the panic button. Show you how strong the horn is. Taking a look at the inside of the vehicle, starting with the inside of the passenger side door. So it has a combination of black and a light gray interior with quite a few accents. So the handle, this is one of my favorites here. So the handle is a metallic portion and then they continue on here with that metallic accent continuing back, kind of solidifying that uh, and blending in the handle, which is look, looking pretty nice. Uh, this is a kind of like a brushed aluminum look. It's not really aluminum, it's like a plastic, but it looks pretty neat. This top portion is soft touch. Now it's kind of like a Nerf type plastic synthetic material. And then around your arm here and here is like a vinyl soft touch surface. The rest is a hard plastic. Now the this pull handle here is sealed, so you can utilize that space for a little pocket. And then you have the pockets at the bottom. Uh, for a bottle or something like that. Manually adjusted seats here for the passenger. And the seats are, they feel like a, like a microfiber cloth. That's what they're really smooth and slick and comfortable. So it's not like a regular plush cloth. There's the floorboard. You can see there's plenty of legroom. Just amazing amount of legroom. A little bit of slight tapering there, but overall really nice. And the dash is a soft touch surface, kind of like the upper portion of the door. You still have that that brushed accent, and then the metallic portion even here around the uh, the vents there. This is a hard plastic. The glove compartment is a non-locking glove compartment smooth on the inside so 
So getting in the vehicle, I have the seat all the way back. And it's one of those things where the pockets uh, allow you to put, empty your, your pockets and put stuff in there before you get inside. And then getting in the vehicle with the seat all the way back anyway is really nice. I mean, I can stretch my legs out quite far and just quite a bit of leg room. A little bit of tapering there, but as far as like just, I'm six feet tall just to give you an idea. Uh, really nice. Now, of course, I have the seat all the way back just to give you an idea of the maximum amount of leg room. So once I put the seat up a little bit, right about there, I start having knee issues here. So my knees are starting to touch. So, but right here, it's all good. The inside of the back door is very similar to the front, except for the this portion right here is hard touch. So you got hard touch here, but you still have the soft touch vinyl down in this area. And I'm really liking these, uh, like a microfiber type seat. So they have the latch system for car seats and getting in now this front seat is still all the way back to give you an idea of my leg room. So I'm six feet tall and check it out. I have room underneath the front seat, like so. There's a pocket here, but not on the other side. A little storage pocket here, cup holders and armrest here that can move out of the way for a center passenger. Now there's a hump here in the center portion. So if I can move in the center position, like so, I'm having to straddle that hump in the center. So if I were to put my legs up there, that's just ridiculous. So like so, that's not so bad on a, uh, a reasonably reasonable length trip here. All right, so moving on here to that side and exiting out. You can see the exit there. There's a little bit of this getting in the way and you know, just overall, uh, not quite as much room to get in and out as the front, but not so bad. So looking at the rear of the vehicle, it has a shark fin antenna up here that's body colored. Third brake light is at the base of the glass here. Has a little, kind of like a deck lid spoiler built into the trunk. And the backup camera is significantly offset over here. Then you have that those chrome pieces down here, and um, I guess they're intended to just kind of look like possible chrome tips or something. The exhaust is fairly well hidden, but it does have two exhaust outlets. So opening up this trunk, uh, there is no button under here. So there's no button or anything under here. You will need to use the key. So we press and hold it and it opens up. So you can see there's no, there's a light and then there's the camera. Okay, so here's the cargo space and looks very adequate to me, very good. And um, it does have this, this one has the cargo mat in place. You can lift this up. There's a floor that lifts up, which will reveal your tools for your spare tire. And underneath this, it'll show your, there's your, uh, your spare tire under there. You do have some exposed metal under here and the seat folds down in one piece. So you can add to your cargo space by folding that seat down, um, but there's no split. So you will either have passenger space or cargo space added. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door. So, and it locks with the vehicle. So it's locked now. We unlock the doors on the vehicle. It also unlocks the fuel door at the same time. So it locks and unlocks automatically. And then it's a capless design. You don't have to worry about putting a cap on or getting your hands dirty. You just put the nozzle in there and pump the gas. So I just want to point out that even in the LX model, you still have the Honda Sensing with the adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation braking system, lane keep assist system. In other words, it actually turns your steering wheel to keep you in, in the lane and the road departure mitigation. So some of these features I'll show you on the, on the inside the vehicle, but I just want to point that out with a lot of safety features, even in the LX.
So I had the key inside the vehicle, it could be in my pocket, in a bag, sitting in the cup holder, whatever. Put my foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button. So here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now the floor mats are in place, but you can see they hook in here in two places. Now your accelerator and brake pedal. You also have a footrest here. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center. You just reach in, move it to the left, and you can lift up the hood. So it's right here. And the hood isn't very heavy, but it does require a prop to hold it up. The prop is right here. You lift it up. Now there's two places that you can put the prop. Uh, and this is one of the benefits of not having a, uh, you know, the shocks holding the hood up. You can put it here as your normal position. So right there is fairly normal for a hood height. But if you need it higher, you can lift it up and put the prop here. That way you have a much better access and view to get around uh, to the engine compartment. So I think that's fantastic. It's much, easy, it's much easier to get the hood out of the way. And uh, when I did engine work and stuff like that, I would one of the, usually what I would do is just take the hood completely off, just even while doing even minor stuff because the hood is such a nuisance. In this case, it just eliminates all that problem. Uh, you can really get around easy. Okay, so the engine compartment here has an insulated firewall and the strut towers are right here. There's the top of the strut and you can see it's braced in with the ACE body structure that Honda has. Insulated battery. And there's no big cover covering up the engine, no big plastic cover like a lot of engines have. Um, it does have some seals around the sides, helps out with the noise and airflow. You can see the seal here, seal here, and then you have a seal across on the hood. There's even insulation on the underside of the hood as well. So it's a four cylinder engine. You can see um, it's a turbocharged engine. So you have your coil packs here, four cylinders. That's the top of the cylinders there. Um, where your spark plugs are. Now, the turbocharger is here in the front. So the cold air comes in, goes through the turbocharger, gets compressed, and it goes over to the intake, goes to the engine, the exhaust is in the front, and goes down underneath the vehicle. So that way, when the airflow comes in, all the heat is ch basically channeled underneath the vehicle, so that's good. Now the engine is, is pumps out 192 horsepower and it's paired to a CVT automatic transmission. Continuously variable transmission. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons here. Uh, you have the front two windows. So the, those are your window controls. The front two are automatic, one touch up and down. Door lock controls here, and then your side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. There's another way of opening up the trunk right here, besides the key. Manually adjusted seats here for the driver, but they do have the height adjustment. Here to the left of the steering column, you have a few buttons here. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges. You can reset the trip. This button is for, it pulls up your menu for your Honda sensing system there on the screen. We'll show you that in a second. And this is your traction control. You can basically turn it off. Default will be on. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that locks in place right here. Now I like the way the handle is easy to find and easy to use. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. I have the seat all the way down and all the way back. Just to give you an idea of the leg room here and this is probably a little bit too far back. I'd probably have to slide it up just slightly. So it has a synthetic steering wheel with a simulated leather texturing to it. Not very soft. It does give a little bit, but it's pretty firm, but good thickness, so it doesn't really dig into your hands. Cruise control is here on the right side, and it's not just a regular cruise control. It does have the adaptive cruise control in which you can 
set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you here. And then the, this is the lane keep assist button here. You can turn that feature on or off. It'll actually, you know, turn the steering wheel and keep you between the lanes. On here on the left side is your volume for your radio, your audio source. Uh, this takes you to a home. So like you have, we'll, we'll get into the screen here in a second, but you have different options here on the screen. And uh, you have your Bluetooth controls, voice recognition down here. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. On the left side is your turn signal with your headlight switch. So off, parking light, automatic, and headlights. So using these buttons here, this little, this little wheel right here, and you can push it in. Um, so we can use these buttons to change some of the things on, the, on the, uh, the dash here. So the dash is a combination here on the right side is actual physical speedometer gauge, fuel gauge, and then over here is a engine coolant temperature gauge. But right in here, this portion is a digital screen. So has right now it shows the tachometer, the RPMs, what gear you're in, outside temperature, and how many miles the vehicle has. So using these buttons right here, let's go ahead and push the home button. So now you can see that that tachometer is a choice. So we can scroll it up and down. Range in fuel, we can choose that. We can have speed and time. So this gives your average speed and your lapse time. Let's go down. Traffic signs. So as you're driving, it'll actually use the camera up here that's used for your road departure warning and your lane keep assist and all that stuff to tell you what the speed limit is. It'll show you, say, like um, the speed limit. I think it's speed limit, um, stop signs, different signs like that can show up right here. Uh, driver support. So this is uh, basically letting you know uh, what safety features are on or off. So the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, uh, the lane keep assist, that kind of thing. Driver attention. So the vehicle kind of keeps an eye on your driving patterns and somehow can tell if you need a brake. I'm not sure how that works, but that's the intention. So maintenance, you can go in here and find out when it's time to change the oil and you can reset it in here as well. Uh, safety and support. So this is more focused on what features are on so all your safety features. So that's what this button here is for. So we can, tr we can push this button and we can, the, um, road, the lane keep assist and all these different features we can have on or off. This is the road depart, actually this is the road departure warning and this is the forward collision warning. So if you're getting false alerts or whatever, you, you can go ahead and, uh, and this is called road departure mitigation. So it actually takes steps to keep you from running off the road. And this is the collision mitigation braking system. This will actually engage the braking system and to mitigate, not completely avoid a, a actual collision. All right, warnings. If there's like right now the fuel's low. It says the stuff like that. So what ha what'll happen is it'll pop up a warning here when you start the vehicle. So it showed the fuel was low earlier, and I just dismissed it. So if we let's say we're in a hurry and we don't know what the warning was, we look back at it. What was that warning? So now we can look it up in this here, and then it goes back to the tachometer. So it kind of looks like a regular gauge here. Now there's something interesting. Uh, you can there's no digital speedometer, um, but if you press and hold this, it gives you a kilometer per hour digital speedometer here. So when you're in another country or whatever, let's like say you drive to Canada, then you can have that. And my understanding is it's the opposite in Canada. It'll actually show miles per hour there and kilometers per hour over there. Um, but I wish they would actually have that, that digital speedometer available um, all the time and not just when you, you, know, you need kilometers per hour. So you press and hold it and it makes it go away. Okay, so over here, there's your radio. And it looks like a touch screen, but it's not. Uh, you do have this make selections down here with your preset buttons. You have a volume, tune through the stations. Uh, you can change your brightness. Uh, but going to pushing the radio button just pops this right up here. And just turning the knob will do the same thing. Now, if we push the radio again, it'll take us to AM, FM1, FM2, and AM. So it just cycles through there. And then there's different media. There's nothing connected to the USB right now uh, or the Bluetooth, but does have the ability to play through that, but right now there's nothing connected. 
So then here's your presets down here. So when we're in radio or another thing what you could do is if you're in certain screens it'll give you the selections that you can make here or you can turn this knob and let's say we want to go into settings we'll push that uh let's go to rear camera we can do the selections so on some screens it'll make you it'll ask you the selections you can select them here but usually you can just go up and down on the list and push that button and then you can go back out of it like so you also have a phone button on that side. And these are all physical buttons here on the outside. There's no touch screen features. Now, right now it's showing a clock. In the settings, you can change, from what I understand, you can change the wallpaper so you can add a picture or whatever you want there. It doesn't have to be the clock. Four-way flashers are here. Climate control has dual zone driver and passenger. They're synced right now. So if I just adjust this temperature, that one is just as well. And it even has these little color changing things going on. So as we turn it, they turn red. As we turn to the left, they turn blue. I thought that was pretty neat. Now when you unsync them, you can push that button and you can select, you know, the color here. I mean, the temperature here. Or if you just start turning it, it unsyncs them automatically. Where you want the air to blow, front and rear defrosters, and there's your fan speed here in the center portion. And it does have the automatic, so we can push that and set the temperature and it kind of automatically does this thing. You can also recirculate the air using that button. All right, this opens up and you, this is where you'll find a USB input and a 12 volt power supply and storage space right in here. Here's your shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And we see the backup camera. Now it has active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, the lines will also move, kind of give you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle as it backs up. Now there's different views. This is a super wide view right here. You can see the vehicles stretched all out and everything. You have a more linear view. Okay, so here's the time in which you need to use these buttons to make selections. So you have the wide view, the linear view, and more top down, straight down view. All right, there's drive, neutral, drive, and then you have a sport road, sport mode. Basically just gives you a little bit more oomph on the, on the shift points or whatever, since it's not a actual, it doesn't shift as a CVT transmission. Then same thing with the low range if you need some engine braking. So the eco mode, you can turn that on or off. Um, it'll show up here. Now, when you have the eco mode on, not only does it affect the engine transmission, all that stuff, but also affects the climate control. So I don't know if you notice, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna be quiet so you can hear the air conditioner kind of get a little bit faster. So everything kind of dims down a little bit as far as the climate control. So I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, so Electronic parking brake is here, so you can engage it. and engages the rear wheels. And uh, to release it, you just put your foot on the brake and push it down. And I like the way it has a very bright indicator light there. Here's your cup holders with these little articulating things to accommodate for different size cups. And it's nice and wide open space, so that way you can utilize the space for more than just cups. All right, so this is your armrest and it's kind of rubbery. It's soft to the touch, but it's not like cushy soft. It's rubbery soft. And this lifts up and it stops right there. Has this little tray that you can take out and put back in. It's rubbery. And there's your compartment. Now it has a rubber bottom, 12 volt power supply. Now it looks like there's a space right in here for wires to go in and out of the compartment and actually feels right there. So that's where the wires go, would go in and out. So you plug it in and play your cell phone right there, that kind of thing. Rear view mirror has a manual day and night mode. You have some tap lights up here. Have the lights turn on with the door using that button. This is your place to put some shades or, or sunglasses or safety glasses or whatever. It has like this foam, kind of thick foam here in the back, but this portion is a smooth plastic. The visors are a cloth cover, just like the headliner. It's a little bit softer cloth though. This is more 
coarse, like a, just a more coarse cloth. Then you have one light, standard bulb it looks like, it's very yellow, and then a mirror. This extends out. Okay, so looking at the visibility, um, just kind of looking at the side mirrors, the rear view mirror. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it has, looking over my shoulder, a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh, pillar back there for a blind spot, but it has the window in there. So overall, just with my eyes, it looks pretty good. All vehicles are gonna have blind spots. And the one that most people overlook is this pillar here, the A pillar. Um, so that, that one really causes a lot of trouble, especially if you're in a habit of not stopping at a stop sign and you keep rolling and keep moving forward and uh, you, you, a vehicle can hide behind these A pillars uh, just enough time to where you don't see them. It's very interesting. I don't know if you've ever happened that ha happened to you before in which a vehicle just all of a sudden appeared in front of you because it was hiding behind that A pillar and must have been hiding as you're moving, it's moving right behind that pillar. So that's something to think about. But anyways, thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.